everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I relate those to our everyday lives. And we are going to do that today. So come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Well, welcome back, everybody. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Y'all listen, I am so excited to talk with you about this subject for a number of reasons, mainly because we're going to make it relatable to our everyday lives. But a lot of you who are with me, who found me years ago, the reason you found me on the internet was because of my Wendy Williams commentary. Ooh, child, those were the days. I'm telling you, so many people loved those. Well, I was doing videos back then, you know, I was coming on camera doing videos and then I would do podcasting videos. And then when my work changed, I just went straight to podcasting. So a lot of you remember all of the conversations we used to have about Wendy Williams. And if you were with me on the secondary channel, uh, the MVMO channel on YouTube, you know, that as things were happening, I continued that commentary over there. People just loved those conversations. Well, we're going to combine that today because we've got some really good news about our girl, Sherry Shepard. Y'all know Sherry started in television a long time ago, way before she ever came to The View. She was a very popular stand-up comedic. We all know Sherry's background, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But what was so awesome about this is that Sherry was just with us. <laughs> she came back home. She came home to the place that, you know, really put her out there on the big time map just a few weeks ago. Getting back co-hosts who have made this show what it is today. And we had a block out a week full for this lady. Take a look at the clip. Welcome our new co-host, Sherry Shepard. Sherry Shepard was right at home at the Hot Topics table from the day she got here in 2007. And kept her cool during some of the most historic and heated moments. You really don't understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Sherry sat down with presidents up for her co-hosts. I just don't appreciate the way you're talking to her. I mean, nobody is attacking you. You didn't have to talk to her. I wasn't here. Like, no, no, no. It was not above going full fangirl. I have wanted to make love to you for my whole life. She would go just about anywhere to get a laugh. I am on my way to my first bikini wax. <laughs> She came back to help us celebrate season 25. Welcome back, Sherry Shepard. Yeah, so that, that was really fun having Sherry back for a week. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. Hold on just a second. Okay, y'all know I'm in my little office space and you hear me very frequently complain about how cold it is back here in this part of the house. So I had to turn on my little space heater. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So if the background noise bothers you, hey, listen. Just cut this off. All right. Say, lady, get it together. No, don't tell me any of that. Just catch me on the next one. OK, so now that I'm warming up, I can continue. So, guys, listen, but Sherry is a bright light in any room, isn't she, guys? Not only does she have a very uh, shining smile, she has a shining spirit about herself. When Sherry was there with us that week, she was also chemistry testing for Wendy Williams show, the Wendy Williams show to take over there. And Sherry had guest co-hosted a few times and she had done great. Matter of fact, what we're hearing online is that out of all the rotating guest hosts for the Wendy Williams show, Sherry Shepard had the highest ratings. Guys, doesn't that make sense? Isn't, like I said, isn't Sherry a shining light? Isn't she a shining light? And so it seems to me that the pop culture entertainment news genre is perfect for Sherry. And so I wasn't surprised that she went over there to Wendy Williams and she killed it. And people loved her. Sherry is 54 years old. She's very confident. I think she knows better now who she is as a woman more than she's ever known. She's taking her health very seriously. She's just winning on every... Let's talk about this. Let me tell you what I think about um, her replacing Wendy. Now, what we learned is that Sherry is in the process of signing this contract. The way this contract is allegedly written is that Wendy will still have the opportunity to come back if she's well enough for the next season. We've learned that allegedly this contract goes something like this. 
Sherry's going to be the permanent guest co-host while Wendy is out. When the new season starts in September, if Wendy is not, if she's able to come back, they're going to let Wendy come back and we won't see Sherry. But if Wendy is not able to come back, they're going to rename the show and Sherry Shepard will be the permanent host. Okay, that's what the contract says, allegedly. Okay, now when reps reached out to Sherry's people to get her to confirm or deny this rumor, you know what they said? We have no comment. And we all know that means yes. Because if it weren't true, they would say, no, she's not even being considered. No, she didn't have a contract. No, um, it's best to not speak when things are in the works. Right, y'all? We've all learned that the older we get. It's best to not speak when things are in the works because you don't want to say the wrong thing that could just screw the whole thing up. OK, let's just quickly review everything that we know has happened with Wendy here recently. And for those of you who aren't privy to these things, they're all they're widely available online. OK, so I'm just going to try to sum it up. Well, we we know that Wendy hasn't been on her show since July of 2021, okay? We know that Wendy has uh, graves and lymphedema. We also know that Wendy has struggled with substance abuse. She's been in and out of um, sober living facilities and drug treatment, okay? We also here recently learned that Wendy's mind is in such a state that Wells Fargo, her bank, put a freeze on all her money because they felt like she was being exploited. And according to the court documents, they felt like she was not quote of sound mind. So they froze her, her money. And then we learn her son, which is very interesting. Her 21 year old son, son is power of attorney over her estate. And so we learned that Wendy filed a lawsuit against uh, Wells Fargo, basically saying, listen, I am of sound mind and blah, blah, blah. And I need my money. I'm not able to pay my bills because of this, you know, you guys freezing my millions and millions of dollars. OK, now, again, I'm just summarizing. I'm not trying to go over every little itty bitty detail. We also learned through Arthur Alston, uh, a.k.a. Choke No Joke, who's a friend of the family, specifically Kevin Hunter, that um, Wendy um, has an unlimited American Express card. And that's what she's been living off of, according to him, um, all this time, because she's not able to pay her employees. She's not able to pay her mortgages, all these things, because Wells Fargo has a freeze on her account. Now, Wendy's lawyers have recently put out a statement, supposedly on behalf of Wendy, where they're saying that basically, you know, she's of sound mind. All these things about her are not true, blah, 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 blah. Yes, it's true. Wells Fargo has put a freeze on her account because they feel she's not of sound mind, but that's not true. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. (laughs) That's the gist of it. Okay. Now, let me tell you what I think. First of all, I think that um, it's very interesting in life how opportunities come our way. It's very interesting. Hold on, y'all. Now it's hot. It's very interesting how opportunities come our way. You know, I have been saying this to you guys, saying this to you guys for a number of years now. That life doesn't stop just because we're getting older, you know? You know, I think um, a big, big problem out there with people who teach on purpose and God's path for our lives, they, they teach it from the perspective that there's really only, we're, we're all born to do this one thing, you know, this one purpose, this one great purpose, right? When really the truth of the matter is, is that there is a path for each of us. But on that path are many chapters and we are supposed to go from chapter to chapter to chapter. You see, life has seasons, but when people teach these things to us, they don't really teach it like that. And so what I find is that people, particularly women, they get in their 50s and their 60s and their 70s and they say, life is over. My kids are grown now. I don't have any other purpose. What am I supposed to do? Um, They just say, well, I'll just garden for the rest of my life or I'll just take care of the dogs for the rest of my life or I'll just sit on the porch and drink coffee the rest of my life. They think it's over. They don't know that life has many seasons on that path and many chapters. And so I have very frequently used various women to talk to you guys about this. And today we're going to use Sherry. At 54 years old, the dream she's had since she was in her 20s is now coming true. What dream was that? If you're not familiar with it, Sherry has said many, many times throughout the years that she's always wanted to host her own talk show. She said it when she was on, a, on the stage as a comedian. That was her ultimate, ultimate dream. She loved acting. She loved comic comedy, comedy, excuse me, but she always wanted to host her own talk show. Now, who would have thought it would have come at 54 years of of age and who would have thought it would have come this way? What do I mean by this way? You know, you know, 
Wendy, the great Wendy Williams, and there will never be another Wendy. No one can do this like Wendy does it. We know that. And I don't think anyone's trying to do that. But who would have thought that the great Wendy Williams would have to leave her show, possibly temporary, possibly permanently, and that would be the open door for Sherry Shepard. That's why we have to just stay open to how the door opens. One of the things I had to really, uh, you know, let go of in my life was trying to control how things came to me. Now, I got to be clear here because I've learned when you're talking about stuff like this, you got, you always have people out there who, you know, for some reason, you know, they take what you say and they twist it. Now, for instance, if you're single and you've always wanted to be married and now another woman's husband comes and talks to you, you say, oh, this is how the door is going to open for me. This is the one I'm supposed to be with. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about stuff like that. No, 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 no. Don't twist it like that, girl. No, that's someone else's husband. And as women, we should never, ever be involved with another woman's husband whether he's married or separated, because guess what? Separated still means married, okay? Okay? So anyway, so I've had to let that go. I've had to just say, God, whatever you have for me in this season of my life, I'm open to it and I will do it. But I let go of the control of how it has to come to me. You know, I'm sure if someone were to talk to Sherry, Sherry would probably say, hey, you know, this definitely was not the way I thought the door would open. And see, Sherry had no hand in how the door opened. You understand what I'm saying? Sherry didn't do something that caused Wendy to mess up uh, what she had going over there. Those were Wendy's decisions. She decided to use the drugs. She decided to do all those things. And so unfortunately, unfortunately, but yet fortunately for her, because had she not stopped, had this not happened to her, had the one thing that she loved not been taken from her, I think this woman would have uh, destroyed herself completely. But my point is, is that we just can't control how the chapter is going to open, how the next chapter is going to open. But I tell you, I love stories like this. I love to see people get to a point in life where they think my dream isn't going to come true. I'm sure, sure. When Sherry turned 50 years old, she probably think, I thought I need to just give up on this talk show thing. I'm always a host, excuse me, a co-host or a fill in, but I can never get it myself. I can't get the gig myself. But who knew at 54, she's about to be 55 this year, that this is the year her dream would come true. That's why it's important never to give up because we never know when the door will open or how. I also have talked to you guys about Cindy McCain at 66, you know, getting the job of her dreams, you know, a recent widow. She said she was going through a depression. We could all understand that. And then at 66, when you think, oh, I'm almost nearing 70, guess it's time for me to sit down. No, she gets offered to be the ambassador of the food program in the Biden administration, which is going to take her literally all around the world at 66. We've talked about so many examples of this star, Star Jones, getting married the second time at 56 years of age and always wanting to have a child, never having that happen. And yet, the the chapter on her path was a man who was a single father. And so we always talk about as women, we come as a package. You know, those of you have children, you're a single mom, you and your kids a package, but there are men who are packages as well, (laughs) you know? And so see at the ripe age of 56, she finds the love of her life on a dating app of all places. And he's a single father and he's looking for a wife and a mom for his son. And guess what? They click. He's a lawyer. She's a lawyer. They're compatible and it just works out perfectly. So I think this is an exciting time in Sherry Shepard's life. I really do. And when she was co-hosting on Wendy's show, I did watch it a few times. Now I can't play any clips for you guys because I don't know what's going on, but I'm just not going to play any clips. I think some people can get away with it. I'm not going to try it over here because YouTube is changing their terms of service. I just know that some people have been complaining when they play clips of Wendy's show for now, uh, during this thing that she's since she's been gone. They've been getting these flags. So I don't know. I just know that I've watched Sherry a couple of times and I tell you, she is in the zone when she's doing it and she's perfectly comfortable at it. And she looks as if she was made to do that, you know? And so I think that all of us need to look at women like Sherry, or if my guys are listening, look at people like Sherry and know that life doesn't stop. And we never really know when our dreams are going to come true. What we know is we just shouldn't give up on the dream. We should keep ourselves out there. 
whether it's the dream job, the dream home, um, the dream family, the dream relationship, whatever it is. Don't say, well, I'm this age and so it's just too late for me. No, it isn't. If you think it's too late, guess what? It will be too late because our thoughts uh, actually create the life we live. And it, our thoughts create the spaces we live in. But if you think it's not too late, guess what? It's not too late. Okay. So I am just excited for Sherry. Now I will tell y'all because I don't watch a lot of television. I can't say I'm going to watch Sherry on here every day. You know, I don't watch TV like that. I don't care about television to that degree anymore. But what I will say is I am fully supporting her. Now, what I hope that they do is once this is announced fully to the media, once the contract has been signed and Sherry is free to come out and talk about it. I hope that they bring her back on The View, this time not to celebrate season 25, but to tell us about her new gig and and see. Now, that could be a little tricky because Wendy Williams is also a friend of the show, right, y'all? One of the consistent guests they've always had throughout the years is Wendy Williams, uh, at least for 10 years, 10 or 11 years. And so I'm hoping that they won't allow that to stop them from bringing Sherry on and letting Sherry talk about hosting, you know, what will probably be her own talk show. Now, as I am, let me tell you what I think about this whole Wendy situation. For those of you who found me originally because of that, you know, those of you who've been with me for years, you probably know that I'm, I'm not surprised by any of this because I have been saying this for years. And a lot of times when you see things or, you know, you kind of what, what psychologists call play the movie out. Um, if you want to know what's going to happen in the future, one of the things that we can do is just play Take currently what's happening and treat it like it's a scene in a movie in our lives and then multiply that scene. So play the movie out is what they call it. Okay, I um, very often use that technique of playing the movie out. You know, for for me, some years ago when I was trying to get my health together, I didn't want to be like my parents and my aunts and uncles and other loved ones who were always on medication. I wasn't on medication, but I had been warned that if I didn't make some changes, I would have to be. So I said, let me play the movie out. If I don't make these changes, (laughs) I'm going to be just like all the people in my family who every morning they have to pull out a bucket full of pills. That's just not what I want for me. I'm not judging them. It's just not what I want for me. Okay. I'm going to take food as my medicine. That's why I love Michael Simon's book, Fix It With Food, right? So anyway, so I made the necessary changes and thank God, you know, I recently went to the doctor and all was well, you know, and all has been well for a number of years with me and it's going to continue to be well because that's a decision I've made. So play the movie out. So for those of you who are with me, if you heard all my other commentary on Wendy or even just a, a piece of it, you know that I believe in playing the movie out. And I played the movie out with you guys. And I told y'all, I always felt like that Wendy was an active user, even though when I was first saying that there weren't any signs of that. But see, I'd worked with substance abusers in the past. And so I know that a lot of substance abusers are really great. They are beyond being functional drug addicts. They are so good that you really wouldn't know they had a problem unless you knew they had a problem. And also, I told you guys that for me, one of the hardest, and I think all of those of us who worked in social services or social work or done work with the public in this way, one of the most difficult groups to work with and to help are people who are addicted, but who also have health problems because they will very often use their health problems as an excuse or a cover up for their addiction. Because as I've said in the past, many symptoms of illnesses like graves or um, lymphedema, et cetera, they mimic some of the signs of those who are, who have substance abuse issues. Sometimes it's the same thing. And so Very often you try to talk to to people who fall in that category about their addiction and then they just say, but you know, I have blah, 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 whatever the health problem is. And that's why this happened. It wasn't that I was using when you know it was because they were using because maybe their kids showed you they were using or something. And so it's a very difficult uh, subgroup to help when they have the addiction and the health problems. Okay. And so I told you guys, I really feel like Wendy is using her health problems as a cover for her addiction. But that's only, I told y'all, that's only going to be able to go on for so long. Those of you who are with me, you remember I said this. One of the worst things that could happen to us is when our own bodies turn against us. Because we don't realize, I think, <clears throat> that we are truly connected. Our mind and our body, our spirit and our soul are all connected. 
And when we're abusing one, it affects all the rest of us. See, we tend to think of ourselves as separate. You know, my mind is one thing. My body is something else. My soul is something else. My spirit is something else. And, And technically speaking, that's true. But synergistically, it's not true. And so I said to you guys, I really feel like there's going to come a point where this lady's body is just going to turn against her because here's the thing. None of us know when our bodies have had enough of our abuse. None of us know where that line is, whether the abuse is pills or alcohol or drugs or food or lack of sleep. I know people who work themselves literally to the point where their bodies are just broken down and and they are still quite young. You know, in their fifties, I consider that quite young, you know? not young, young, but you understand, you know, they don't have one foot in the grave, but their body is in such a state where they can't travel like they would like to. They can't uh, enjoy their children. They can't enjoy their relationships sexually because they've got all these health problems because they just wouldn't take care of themselves. So none of us know when our bodies have had enough of us eating the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing, not taking care of ourselves, Um, using substances, even if it's just recreationally, none of us know where that point where the body says, that's it. I can't recover from what you've done to me. And so unfortunately, that's where Wendy is. Um, Also, I told you guys, I felt like she had something was wrong with her mind. And I was saying years ago that it was another guy there with Norman. I can't remember his name because was it Jason? I can't remember, but he got fired too. Fire, we heard. But I told you guys, the purpose of those two guys is to help her remember things. And when I said that, I remember a lot of people were like, that's not true. How could you say that? Because see, there were no what people would call outer signs, you know. Um, And then when that guy left, of course, it was just Norman. And then as the years went on, you know, uh, people then began to say, hey, you're right. I think Norman's job is to help her remember things because she couldn't remember the names of celebrities whom she had discussed thousands of times. Maybe that's an extreme hundreds of times. And you could clearly see her struggling to remember things. But I told you guys that could be her mental health or it could just be effect of her substance abuse. We don't know. But the bottom line was, I told you guys, if she doesn't stop, something's going to really happen here because she's going to reach a point of no return. And unfortunately, I think that's where Wendy is. In terms of the statement that her lawyers gave out, let me tell y'all something. I don't know about y'all, but here's the big, here's the deal. How many times in the past, Did we get statements from Detmar Mercury, statements from Wendy, statements from Wendy's representatives that says all is well. She's just out on her graves, you know, because of her graves. And then she would come back and tell us she was in substance abuse treatment. So the fact that the attorneys are now putting out statements that she's not, uh, she is sound of mind and blah, blah, blah. I don't believe any of that. I'm going to tell you something. If Wendy Williams could be sitting in that purple chair, even if she had to drag one of her legs, she'd be doing it. I think her mind is in a state where she just isn't literally able to. She just isn't able to. And she won't be able to. Now, let me just point out something else that's very interesting to me as someone who used to work with um, families. When you have no one um, that you trust or that you're friends with, when you have to put your 21-year-old son as your power of attorney, that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. You say, oh, well, she could be doing it because she just trusts him out of everybody else. No, I think she doesn't have anybody else. That's the point. She doesn't have anybody else. Why am I saying that? Am I just making this up? Am I just trying to be mean spirited? No, I'm telling you what she told us. Remember those of you who watched her documentary? Remember that? After she did her documentary, she was sitting on the couch with those things on her leg because of her lymphedema. Y'all remember that? Remember when she burst out crying and she said, there was no one. I had no one. I have no one. She said, she said, I have to be, I am my own best friend. And Wendy has told us for years, she doesn't trust people. Well, that has not served her well because in life we have to trust somebody. And so I feel that it's really sad that at her age, she's 57. She didn't have any friends. You know, we understand the situation that happened with the husband, so she can't trust him, but she didn't have any friends that she can say, I, you, you've lived long enough to, to, and I feel confident enough in you to put you as my power of attorney. When you have to choose a 21 year old, let me just tell you, I don't know about the, I don't know the son, but I'm going to sus- suspect he's about the, just like every other 21 year old. 
that he's probably not that responsible. Most 21 year olds aren't, especially 21 year olds of these celebrities. They're used to the to the the cushy life and and the and the and the the the, the life of, of just not having to work that hard because mom and dad are rich. And so I understand, at least from my perspective, I think he's the power of attorney because she didn't have anybody else. Now her father is still alive, but he's in his late eighties. And so, you know, hey, that might not have been the best decision. She also has a brother and she has a sister. Neither of those people, her power of attorney. The fact that she chose a 21-year-old to me says a whole lot as someone who used to work with families. See, if I were interviewing her and she told me that, I would know immediately what the situation was, the dynamic was in the family and what her dynamic was. And finally, I will say this. Um, A lot of people have wanted to focus on the fact that about the marriage and how all this is happening to Wendy because of this no good man. Well, (laughs) listen, if you've been with me on the Wendy commentary, you know, I said for a long time, no, this ain't got nothing to do with the no good man. Finally, we got from her interview with Andy Cohen that she had known the entire marriage that her husband cheated on her. She said, she told Andy that, I've known. She said, this specific girl, Sharina Hudson, I've known about her for 15 years. So I said to you guys, listen, on the secondary channel, I said, and not here, that listen, when you've known your husband is cheating on you, you, your entire marriage, you are not devastated when you finally get divorced from this man. See, I, I think people get so emotional or they try to assume that Wendy felt the way they felt. <clears throat> um, and I'm like, okay, people just aren't thinking. And that's why I stress a lot and I try to live this way. Common sense first, y'all. Common sense, not emotions. If you've known, let's say you've been married, like they were married, for, they were together for over 25 years, but married for 21 or 22. If you have known as the wife that he's been cheating on you the entire marriage, are you going to be devastated and shocked when y'all eventually get divorced? Of course you're not. See, that's just common sense. But people don't want to look at that. They want to go by emotions. And they want to say, well, when my husband was cheating on me, well, first of all, did you know your husband was cheating for the entire time? If you did, you're as big a fool as she was. But most women, you know, who aren't in the celebrity sphere, you know, if they do know their husband is cheating, they don't know he's cheating the entire marriage. And I don't know any woman who stayed the entire time, you know, so there that tells you some things about Wendy. And then you, you have people that want to use the excuse of, well, she stayed for the son because that's the excuse Wendy gay. Well, let me tell you something. I used to work with abuse women too. And I've taken many women to many shelters. And I will tell you, no woman truly stays for the children. That's just what women tell themselves because it's, it it sounds better than saying I stayed because I loved him. I stayed because I didn't know what else to do. I stayed because blah, blah, blah. But see, it's easy. And it sounds very uh, martyrous to say I stay for my kids. But see, I've been in the room when adult children confronted their parents and said, why didn't you leave? You made it worse for us by staying because you were always depressed. You were always sad. You were taking your frustrations uh, on out on us. So see, it never benefits children, quote unquote, to stay in abusive type situations, even if the abuse is not physical. But if it's emotional abuse, someone's running around on you, that is emotional abuse. And that energy is going to go somewhere. And if there are children in the house, they're going to get the brunt of it. And so the bottom line for me is I feel like, unfortunately, Wendy Williams had a lot of self-esteem and self-worth issues that caused her to to not even require monogamy from a man, you know, and clearly she was okay with him sleeping around because she stayed all those years. Clearly she was okay with it. You say, well, she may not have been okay with it. Well, if she wasn't okay with it, I would think she wouldn't have stayed. Don't you see in that common sense if you're not okay with it? Especially if you're in her situation where you have millions of dollars, you can leave. And not to mention the man had a house right down the road, so he wasn't there all the time. So the people want to say, oh, you can't always leave. Yeah, the average woman can't always leave. But in her case, she's not the average woman. The average woman is not a multimillionaire. And Wendy was always traveling. She was always on the road. If she wanted to leave, she could have left. She didn't have the situation that the average woman would have, guys. So we got to stop trying to, you know, basically advocate for ourselves by pretending we're advocating for someone else, which is what that is. When people say, you, you know, you don't know. And, and she could have, no, they're thinking about them. I couldn't leave. And so when I look at her, I assume she couldn't leave either. No, she's not you. 
You're not her. Totally situ- different situation there. And every situation, we have to look at the circumstances. So as I end our time together, I will just say, it's very sad how this door opened up in the sense that one person can't function right now. Um, but it did open. And Sherry was a long list of people over the last many years who've co-hosted this show. Nick Cannon did it. Michael Rappaport did it. Leah Remini, many, many others. But Sherry was the one who shined the brightest. And she was the one who the fans took to the most. And she was the one who did this with confidence. And whereas some of those people needed a sidekick, not Sherry, Sherry was able to hold it on her own. And at 54, her dream is coming true. I, I truly believe that what will happen in this situation is that Wendy will not be able to come back. I believe the bank. If the bank said that they had reason to believe she was not of sound mind and that she was being exploited, I believe the bank has reason to believe she wasn't of sound mind. And we know that the bank is trying to get the record sealed because they don't want to expose her personal business to the world. And so we don't know if the judge is going to allow those records to be sealed or not. But if they're not sealed, you better believe it's going to make the blog, the rounds on the blogs. As soon as the bank presents all the evidence that they have saying we have rightful reason to freeze the accounts because we saw certain red flags. Right. And so the bottom line for me is I think that this is a wonderful opportunity for Sherry Shepard. I think what's going to happen is Wendy will not be able to come back, as I said. And when September rolls around, they're just going to give Sherry her own show. They're going to re, uh, you know, redo the whole, like they said, the name of the show, the whole vision of the show, the whole um, optics, the, uh, the, the marketing, all of it. And Debmar Mercury is going to give Sherry her own, her own show. And no one deserves it better than Sherry or more than Sherry. Now, well, Sherry is Sherry Wendy. Of course she isn't. But Sherry, that's that's why she succeeded, because she wasn't trying to be Wendy. You know, all those other people, you know, I don't I don't won't say they tried to be Wendy, but we could just tell that some of these people, pop culture, speaking on celebrities. So you can't be so friendly with celebrities that you're afraid to say something uh, about them or critique their behavior or critique some decision they made. No, Wendy, that's why Wendy used to say you can, you, you're either going to be of the people or of the industry, but you can't do them both. And Wendy used to say, I can't be friends with all these celebrities because, you know, my job is to come and dish the tea on them. Right. So I think that Sherry's going to just shine bright. Um, again, I look forward to her being able to come to the view when all this is solidified and the signatures are done, when she's free to talk about it, because this is her time. And we all wish Wendy the best. We do. I do too. Unfortunately, I'm very clear that when we make certain decisions in life, we could get to a point where we just can't recover from those bad decisions. Our body can't recover. Our mind can't recover. We've seen this many, many times. People in our own lives, and we've also seen this with celebrities. Unfortunately, some celebrities get to the point where they pass away. Their decisions have been just that detrimental to their health. So we'll just have to watch and see how this all plays out. But I am rooting for both Wendy and Sherry. But in this case, I think this is Sherry's time to shine. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. This was a long time, (laughs) us being together. But I know so many of you have been asking me about this whole Wendy Williams thing. So I thought I'd just combine it. This is My View on the View, a podcast all about ABC's The View. I'll talk to you on the next one. Trying hard, but you want to be my friend. Ain't no place to hide.